What's going on guys? Welcome back to Rambling Garage. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 89 Trans Am GTA, kind of like most of my videos lately. Uh, we're going to be looking at upgrading the stereo, uh, just the speakers really. The stereo has already been upgraded to have an aux input and it's been all gone through uh, by a guy named Barlasol on the Buick forums. If you guys need his contact information, I'll put it in the description. Again, we're going to do all new speakers. I'm going to spin you around here. I'll show you what we're going to do. All right, for the fronts, we are going with some Kenwood. I believe I already showed you guys these in a previous video, but we're, I, I believe these are the fronts, some 4x6s. Um, some KFC 4675C. I will put the part number in the description, and then the rears are going to be KFC 6966S. So these are some uh, pretty, the, they're 4 ohm speakers. I think they should be fine. These are pretty shallow, so I'm hoping they fit in the front just fine because there's not a whole lot of room up under that dash. But... Uh, that's enough talk, let's jump right into this. Um, I'll do a little before on the audio and do a little after. Why don't you have car insurance, Tanya? It's too expensive. I couldn't keep up with the payments, so my insurance canceled me. You should call Freeway Insurance. I have the same car as you and I pay one dollar a day. You could be... All right, so there's the, uh, so the stock speakers. They just sound kind of tinny. Uh, I mean, they're almost, they're coming in on 40 years old and they're paper cones and everything, so they need some upgrading. So uh, we're gonna pull this dash. It's pretty easy. I believe we have a couple eight mils. I have to confirm that size, but uh, four up there. And if we look down here, there's another one there, there, there. Oh, I don't believe these ones, these might be part of it. I had to look. I'll confirm with you guys and I'll show you guys what exactly we need to replace. All right, guys, I lied. These are sevens. I'm going to start by taking the ones out down here, and then we'll get the ones up top here. Um, they say to do this with a friend. I'm going to try it on my own. I'll just bring the steering wheel down once I have those out and pull it straight out. I'll let you guys know how that works. Uh, kind of hard to film some of these screws just because they're in weird spots, um, so I'll let you know exactly where I had to take them all out of. All right, guys, so I feel like this is a fairly rare sight. Pretty clean, pretty nice dash pad in there. Um, it was pretty easy to take out. There ended up being six screws on the bottom. They look to be all about the same size. And then uh, the four up top here that you can see. So we come back and look in here. You can see, hopefully through the glares, we're replacing that four by six and the other one over there. And we'll toss the dash back in there. Kind of neat just seeing how truly clean it stays under there even after all this time. So uh, these look to be eights as well. Looks like only potentially two screws holding them in. So we'll get those taken out. All right guys, the old one here on the right, new one on the left. You can tell their sizes are virtually identical. Uh, hopefully this will work just fine. Uh, I'm gonna use our adapter, which I put in here somewhere. Um, this guy right here. So we'll use this adapter, get it all uh, plugged in, ready to go, and we'll try it out. All right, both are back in. They seem to fit just fine. Uh, they do only have the two screws holding them in, so they come up a little bit in the back, but uh, you can see that over here as well. I don't think that's going to be a problem. One thing I will say is be very careful not to hit your uh, your windshield as you're pulling out the speakers because you wouldn't want to have some sort of silly crack or something like that. But uh, no issues here. I did tap it a couple of times and uh, it's glass. It's fine. But be careful. Uh, we're going to put the dash back in here and then we're going to move on to the ones back here, which should only be removing that guy and uh, it should be pretty easy. All right, so dash is back in, speakers are in, you can see them here. I took the uh, the grills off and I will explain that later. Um, still got to put the, the screws and everything in, but wanted to make sure everything works perfect before I put uh, put screws back in and have to do this again. Um, onto the backs, this is literally just a cardboard cover with some like carpeting felt on it. Um, so there's our rear, I believe, six by nine. Uh, it's my understanding you can fit just about anything back here, but we're going to do something that matches the front. I don't want to overpower the front with the rear or vice versa. So it looks like uh, seven mil screws. I think I said eight mil earlier at one point, but uh, seven mils, all four. Same thing over there. All right, so we're over here grabbing the, the six, I think these are six by nines. I can't remember if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, I believe so. Um, I, I forgot to mention, I have these Metra harnesses there, 72-1002. Um, these are just so I don't have to splice any wires and these uh, bolt in directly. So if I wanted to go back to factory speakers at some point, I could do that. So uh, we'll get these put in in the back and then we'll get a, a full uh, little demo of what the upgraded sound system sounds like. And I forgot to show you guys just uh, size similarities. New ones are just a touch taller. 
And they do actually hit the magnet on like some foam in the back of the car, but that's not a big deal. So I also want to show you guys the uh, connector and just how those work. So they just plug in just like that. And then they use a uh, factory connector directly. All right, guys, I'm in the back seat for hopefully the last time ever in my life. Um, just a note, the screw that you're putting in here is going in this hole. And then there's a little a little nub that falls into that hole. So I'm going to get this all uh, wound up or wrapped up and uh, we'll show you guys the, the end result here. All right, and that's a complete wrap. We have everything back together back here. Uh, minus the uh, the covers here. I was going to put some double-sided tape on and put those down. Uh, reason being is the way those are installed are by little plastic pieces that break. Um, and if you guys had an example around here, but I don't know where it went. If you guys see these little things laying around, um, these were used to like thread the plastic and hold those uh, speaker covers on. So all of all but like two of mine were broken. Um, so I just decided to take them out. Also, the uh, pegs that hold those down were catching on my speaker wires here. Well, you can kind of see over there that one's a little black because it was getting caught on. Um, so I just took them out. I'm going to double-sided tape them on, um, and that's going to limit some uh, some rattling in this car. As you guys probably know, these third gens are infamous for rattling like crazy. So I've got all the, the screws on up there. Let's uh, let's try this thing out and try not to get demonetized. That's a demonetize. <laughs> I'm gonna find an ad and just see if we got rid of our vibration and kind of tinniness, and then I'll let you guys know my actual thoughts when I try it on my own. A lot of those reasons aren't anything to be worried or concerned about. Um, there's only really a very few reasons uh, to be worried about that. I think it sounds pretty good. Let me see if I can find any, uh, I don't know if I can do royalty free music because I have to uh, record with my phone, but let me see what I can do. Alright guys, well there we have it. I played it afterwards with uh, some more like 90s rock and that's the kind of music I'll be playing in the car. The bass is a lot better. Uh, nice deep thumps. And as you can tell, it is all just factory. Uh, I did not glue these down yet by any means, but you can see, unless you have the perfect angle right there, you can't tell that they're aftermarket. So, all looks stock. Sounds great. Hopefully you guys get a decent idea of how it sounds in that little video that I did. It was a Snapchat video. Only way I can record without, uh, you know, cutting out the audio or else getting a different camera. So uh, it sounds great. I'd highly recommend this. All right, guys. So there you have it. The new Kenwood speakers in my 89 Trans Am GTA. I recommend doing this 100%. Um, even if you use, I'm usually an Alpine guy. I don't want to do anything too crazy because if you try and put some speakers in there that, you know, require a little more power, you might get negative results. So I went with some very uh, middle of the road Kenwoods. And I really, really like them. So feel free to let me know what you guys think. Uh, ask any questions below if you have them. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you there.